Tonight's clearing is on divorce. That's a good one. Um, so just to be clear, it doesn't mean that you can't do this clearing if you've never been divorced, okay? And it's really about any relationship that you have been in that you're no longer in, or it can be experiences with different people that maybe you weren't in full relationship with, but you've had intimacy with, okay? So basically, what we do is we're gonna be clearing out the energy of whoever you were in relationship with in the past. And what we're gonna be doing also is clearing out any frequencies that might still be in your energy field from them, as well as any of your energy that could be still with them. So let me just kind of explain this a little bit, because this might seem like, what is she talking about? Okay, so energy is something that everything is. I think you already know that. But the emotional energy, the emotional component, is where we hook into one another, okay? It doesn't matter if you're angry with somebody or you have a lot of fear with somebody or you think you're madly in love with somebody or you want to possess somebody. It's all emotional energy and that emotional energy latches on to your partner just as your energy does the same with whoever you are with or whoever you've been with. So usually with um, in marriages, things get really... Um, convoluted, they get really enmeshed, and then when people want to end the relationship for whatever reason, even if both parties are willing and want that to be done, it doesn't matter that you are signing papers and you're, okay, we're done, we're divorced, it's over, but most people will see that somehow there's some kind of residual, meaning you're still thinking about them, you're still questioning whether or not you made the right decision, whether you, you know, did I, should I still be with them or did I make, you know, did, is this the right thing to do or, or you can still be thinking about them or dreaming about them or feeling emotionally tied to them. This can go on for years and years and years. What's happening is when we are connected with anyone, we have an exchange of energy. The emotional energy gets lodged inside of our own physical body. It doesn't just go away because now you're getting a divorce, okay? Or ending the relationship. That's not what lifts the energy out. It has to be done with intention and it has to be removed with, per like, like you either, either you do it yourself or you have somebody else do it. It doesn't just go away. And that also includes all of your past incarnational experiences. I've actually had people that were married in this lifetime, divorced, I've had this hundreds of times, and there was still some kind of not letting go, still holding on, couldn't be you know, finished with the relationship. So not only cleaning up the energy frequencies of each other's emotional energy, but also all the past incarnation as well that they've had together. Also, how many of you that have been in relationship with someone that you dearly loved, and you maybe said things like, I'll love you forever. Anybody do that? Even young? Promise that you'd love them forever? Well, guess what? There's an echo that's still echoing. You're not freed of that, okay? And then the promises and, and people do vows and they take oaths and they make promises. And just because we separate does not mean you've let go of all of those vows. I've seen it time and time again, where you have to unravel all the vows that they've taken, because it, it, it's like you are setting forth an intention, you are making promises, and those echo through eternity, bottom line. So if you really, really, truly want just the one you're with to be in your energy field, then you gotta clean out all this other stuff. It will make a difference, you will feel differently with your partner, that you're in relationship with now. It'll be cleaner, purer, you'll feel more open, more available, and you'll be 
more deeply bonded, more connected, and your heart will open even more. Because when you have other people's emotional energy in your body, they're with you on some level. Okay? I mean, you all know about entities, right? Discarnate beings, dead people inside your body, okay? It's different than that. It's the emotional energy of that. It's almost like the perpetrator energy, like when someone's caused harm to somebody, like someone has done some kind of violation or molestation, rape, things of that nature. You will always, always, always find the perpetrator energy, emotional energy still lodged inside their physical body. Part of why people can't heal through those kinds of really intense experiences is because the energy is still in them. That perpetrator energy is still in them. So all of your relationships, anyone that you have, even as a small child and you had a girlfriend or boyfriend, you know, that early, early, early love thing, you know, they're not really, it's not about sex, but it's about the emotional connection, the bond that happens. Even with that, there, there still can be a lingering frequency in your body as well as in their body of each other's emotional energy. As long as that's there, you're not free from it. It, it affects your thoughts, it affects your feelings, it affects your beliefs, it affects your ability to truly step 100% into your relationship. It's not something that you're consciously aware of and yet as we start clearing these frequencies, then you're going to get a better sense of what that really means, you know, how that's really affecting you. So all past relationships, whether we are doing divorce, see, divorce is like, it's, it, it, there's so much involved in that, especially if it's a really intense divorce, if it, it, especially if it's something where there's like, like children involved and money involved and lots of attorney stuff and lots of big things happening, there can be a lot of trauma with that. You know, sometimes people who thought they could end their relationship amicably find out that no, that didn't work and then they become hating each other. You know, and they still have children or kids that they still have to be involved with and, and that they'll always be connected to this partner. So the intensity of divorce or so, sometimes the, the pain, the loss, the rejections, the betrayals, there's all these frequencies that people experience. And if those aren't cleaned up, they don't just go away. And we carry them forth and, and also not only in, in this lifetime, but we will carry the trauma of these experiences into the future. It's just what we do. So what we want to do is start cleaning stuff up. So with divorce, I mean, that's like, I mean, I remember in the past it was really intense. Nowadays it's like so common, you know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, you're divorced, okay, no big deal. Where in the past it wasn't, wasn't acceptable to be divorced, you know, but now it is. So people take it lightly. It's kind of like sometimes like changing, you know, your, your wardrobe or something. Oh, I'm done with that one. That one's over. And if you don't clear out the frequencies, then you're still going to be affected by it. So you want to make sure that that's what happens. So when I talk about, oh, Trixie, why don't you go ahead and let that, see if that's someone who's, um, so if you want to be freed from all that, then clearing and releasing all of these energies is like vital. Okay, so when we utilize the, the clearings to release frequencies out of the body, it, what's really cool about it is there's nothing you have to do other than perhaps just hold the feeling inside of whatever you are aware of, okay? So if I, if I say something like, okay, I want you to bring forth and just remember someone from the past that might just present really quickly or easily. And if you've had, so if you're like, had a lot, a lot, a lot of, lot of intimate relationships and connections, then a lot of people will start presenting. But basically what we want to do is, however you feel when you bring forth these memories, that's how we go deeper into the unraveling. It's all about feeling into how it makes you feel when you think about this particular person. So for example, let's say someone had a really bad divorce and there's a lot of bitterness and this is another thing that happens. People get divorced and then they, they say they don't, from that moment forth, they're never going to open their heart all the way. They're not going to let anybody in because it was like a real traumatic experience. I can think of someone right now that 
Um, he married and then divorced and then married again and, and now it's like it's like he's made decisions based on what happened in the past rather than meeting the situation and the person for who they are. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like holding the past and like, okay, well, someone did that to me, so therefore, in order to avoid that, I'll never let myself trust a woman again or trust a man again. I'll never let him in all the way. So we put all up our barriers and our blocks, and then, and then the very thing people are saying is, I want love. I want connection. I want to have a, a, a deep relationship. I want to have my best friend in as my partner. Well, how are you going to do that if you've got blocks in your heart inhibiting you and keeping you from truly opening your heart and knowing love? You cannot and you will not. You'll, there'll always be a holdback. How many people, even right now, are not like both feet in their relationship and giving it all they've got and the heart totally wide open? Open, 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 no holes barred, no holding back at all. <laughs> so you can, sometimes you can literally feel your own blocks in your heart. Do you know what I mean? You can feel it. You can feel like where you're not opening and letting your fullest expression come out. There's a withhold. Why is that? Because you had experiences where love, you think love hurt. You had loss, you had abandonment, you had betrayal, you had rejection. You interpreted the ending of relationship as either failure, you did something wrong, or they did something wrong, or they judged you or blamed you or betrayed you or abandoned you or rejected you or you did it to them. So these are all heart-closed frequencies. People, love is not what hurts. You know that. You don't know that. Do you know that? So love is an, is, a, is an open expression. It has no attachment, it has no need, it doesn't have right or wrong. But it's the, it's the other components where we've gotten hurt or someone left us and we, that, we think that's love. So them leaving us isn't the love part. That's the hurting part. But we identify love with the pain and therefore we close the heart rather than keeping it open to no love again. So all these little sticklers in there, all these little reasons why you haven't opened your heart all the way, those are the kinds of things we want to unravel and get out of your energy field so that you can open your heart even more fully and, and have even deeper, more profound experience of love. And then we also have the intimacy aspect of all of that. Okay, so when we have intimacy, that means into me see. That means I'm willing for you to see me, all of me. That means I'm willing to show up, look in my eyes, come in and feel who I am. Okay, when we have these little blocks, you can't do that. It's not safe to do that. And all these little blocks have to do with all your conclusions, all your experiences, all your reasons why, you, you know, you're going to make sure who they are, find out, are they going to show up before you're going to open up to them. Okay, so especially when we have really intense divorce situations, a lot of pain happens, a lot of really hurtful experiences, a lot of exchange of negative words and blaming and judging and all of that. And it just keeps, you can feel the heart closing down. Like physically, you can feel it closing down. And when the heart is closed down, then all those desires that you say you want are not possible. Like, I want to know love, I want to have relationship, I want connection. All of that is not possible. And then if you have any kind of um, th beliefs around anything that you've done, if you're judging yourself and you don't want to be seen, then of course you're going to have little walls up and barriers up protecting you so you can stay hidden from the world. Well, as long as you've got a little barrier up, as long as you're hiding, you're not going to know intimacy. It's not possible. Have you noticed how in our world nowadays, people, rather than get to know each other, people jump into bed with each other? Have you all noticed that or heard about that or know that's happening? That is not intimacy. Anybody can have sex, okay? That is not intimacy. Intimacy is really connection, 
being seen, being witnessed, and telling truth, and being open to know and receive love, and to give love, and to be seen in all your dysfunctions and all your great parts of yourself, but it means all of you, not just this part, okay? So, what we're, people are looking for love, bottom line. They want intimacy, bottom line. And they don't know that, that these, all these components, all these aspects of themselves, closing the heart down, protecting the heart, is going to keep them from knowing intimacy. You have to be willing to be seen. You have to be willing to share who you are, all of who you are. No holding anything back. And the whole world is holding back. I mean, there's hardly anybody that's not like holding back something. You know, and then also what happens, some, your partner does something, makes you angry, upset. Oh, can't trust that, can't trust him on that one. Oh, is he going to do that again? Or is she going to do that again? So we have all these reasons why we're not going to open our heart fully to somebody. And yet, to have intimacy, that's the only, only way you will ever have what you're looking for. So you, we are the ones that have to be brave enough to be willing to share who we are all the way. And what that means is, where's the blocks? Where's the hiding places? So when you think about your relationship and you think about all the good parts and where you are open and where you do communicate, notice what that feels like. Okay, it feels open, it feels good. You're not hiding anything. But what about the places or the times when you're feeling like you don't want to share that something with your partner? Or your, you know, your spouse. You don't want, to, don't want to share that part or feel like you can't share that part. Perfect example, you guys. This is such a trip. So there's this couple that got together and, you know, she's, she's madly in love with him. She wants him. He's madly in love with her. But she won't tell him, she didn't want to tell him that she smoked because she believed that he would judge her. He wouldn't want to be with her. So she's withholding that. How can you, you know what I'm saying? What I don't get is how couldn't he couldn't smell it? Because cigarettes smell like really strong, right? So she would hide her smoking. But truly, truly, truly feeling, like I said, I kept telling her, you have to let him, what are you doing? You have to let him know, oh no, I can't do that. I, I got to keep that hidden. Or perhaps it's something like, oh, you just dinged your car and you don't want to tell your partner. Okay, so I mean, there's all these little things, but then there's all these, there, there's bigger things. Like, okay, some people, this is a trip, but some people don't want to, like, for example, they get involved with somebody who's a vegetarian, they don't want to tell peop, that vegetarian that they eat meat. Or, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, don't let people know who you really are. Don't really share your, your whole being with them. Keep some stuff hidden. That way they won't judge you, they won't reject you, and you won't lose them. And yet, you can feel in your body an angst when you're not just being who you are. You know, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. You can feel when you're not being your true self, you can feel there's like a holding back, and it becomes a physical sensation in your body. So all of your past experiences, you've drawn conclusions, you've um, closed your heart down. And what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about just this lifetime. I'm actually talking about your soul's evolution. Because in your soul's evolution, you've had many, many experiences, male and female, you being in a male body and in a female body. You have had intimacy throughout your soul's in incarnational experiences. But each time that you had an experience that was in some way what you perceived as loss or negative, for example, if someone is madly in love and their partner dies, guess what they're going to conclude? I'll never open my heart and love again. It's too painful. But love is not what's hurting. It's the loss of your beloved that hurts. Love does not hurt. If people had this piece I'm going to just say in just a moment, it would be a game changer in your whole world. And that is, in the face of the deepest grief, in the face of despair, in the face of loss, in the face of rejection, if you can keep your heart open and keep loving, 
those energies will leave your body, be, not because you're not feeling them, but because you are feeling them. When you keep your heart open in the midst of excruciating pain, loss, and you let that energy move through you, your heart will stay open. You won't close it down. Not an easy task. It's intense. And yet that is how we release energy by feeling what it's feeling like, staying present with it, but at the same time, keep the heart open and keep loving. So the love that you have for your partner, even if they die, you, if you keep feeling the love for them and keep loving them with everything and open your heart and keep loving them, it's going to pull up excruciating pain. It's going to pull up your past life losses and pain. I guarantee it. Okay? It's going to pull up stuff from your subconscious and you'll have memories and you'll have visions and, and things that were so lost that you forgot about will come to the surface. Even past lives will present. Okay? But that is a key. It's a key. I'm giving you guys a little key here. So that key is, no matter what, keep loving. And if you do that, you will not keep putting another barrier, a brick in your wall, to protect yourself from pain. That's another thing. It always cracks me up. I did it myself. You know, it's like, okay, well, I don't want to hurt anymore, so the way to avoid being in pain is to don't love anybody all the way. Always hold back. Always keep a little bit back. Okay? So in that, then you get that same feeling. I want intimacy. I want connection. I want bonding. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And yet here you are saying, no, 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 I'm not going to open my heart. You think, yeah, so if I don't open my heart, then I won't feel pain. Do you, you simply know that's, that's ridiculous because you do feel pain. Pain doesn't just stop because you're not going to open your heart and love again. Pain is there until you release it. The way to release it is open the heart, let it come, let it cry it out, scream it out, whatever you got to do, but let it move. Let your heart shatter, let it break, but keep loving anyway, and I guarantee you, you will not hold that trauma in your body. It will leave your body. It's at the loss of anything that you love, whether it's a person or a pet or whatever. And you let the energy move right through you by keeping your heart open. It'll feel really intense. It's very uncomfortable. It'll feel like your heart's breaking. It'll feel like it's shattering. And yet, if you can do that, what happens is the heart starts to come into wholeness and the light of the heart begins to shine forth. And then you're ready for intimacy. And then you're ready to really let someone really know you. You're ready to let somebody in because you're no longer afraid that love's going to hurt. So with divorce, most divorces, there's some kind of angst. There's some kind of pain. There's some kind of, you know, anger, frustration. There's all kinds of emotions happen through divorce because you're, you know, you've been with somebody that you've had deep, deep, deep experiences with, and now you're extracting yourself from each other, and all of your history is still there, especially if you've had long-time relationship with someone. I mean, even after a year, you're still going to have bonding. They're still going to be enmeshing and things of that nature. And the longer the relationship, the more intense the frequencies are for, for letting go. And that's, once again, it's still about, because you know, normally people that get married love each other. I mean, occasionally you have things where they do it for different reasons. And, and oftentimes, almost every situation, they get married because they love each other, but they still got one foot kind of out the door. Okay? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Hmm. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Because I used to do that, waiting for the one. <laughs> yeah. So, one foot out the door, even with one foot out the door, you st there's still love. Okay? You wouldn't have married them if you didn't have some love. So you've given yourself and made promises, even though somewhere back there you're still waiting for the one. It doesn't matter. You're still, you're still connected. You're still bonded. So this energy starts to separate. And without clearing stuff out, then you can still be thinking about them. And you're not really available for a new love. You're not ready. You know what I mean? You're no longer available. 
because your heart's still protected. But then, of course, guess what you'll get? You're going to get the same thing. So if your heart's closed down and you don't, you know what I mean? If you're not wanting to have deep, deep, deep intimacy, of course, you're thinking you do, but you're not realizing that, oh, whose heart is closed? Hmm. So if my heart's closed, what am I going to get? I'm going to get somebody else whose heart is closed. So here's the thing. Wherever you are, I guarantee you, <laughs> your partner's the, the same, same, same. Okay? It might look like one's more open than the other, but you wouldn't have that connection because, I'll remind you, you wouldn't have the wound mate connection if you didn't have wounds. Okay? So unraveling those, those frequencies is what we want to do. All right, so were you asking what? So you said that we're always one foot out the door because we're waiting for the one. I mean, once we have these frequencies cleared out of our systems, does the one just become somewhere, someone who's like a less significant wound mate who we vibrate with more to whatever capacity or? Yeah, so let's say that, you, let's say finally you've opened your heart, but that means you're, a lot of frequencies are gonna come out. Okay, so you've changed your frequency. That means that who you attract will meet you more where you live. Okay, you will be more attracted to the frequency that meets you where your frequency is. So let's say before you had a major closed heart, guess what you're gonna get, major closed heart. Oh, now you've done some clearing healing, your heart opens, oh, you feel differently. Oh, this partner doesn't fit anymore next one comes in is going to match you where you are. So the clearer you are, the, the more higher frequency level of relationship you will have. Cleaner, purer, more, heart more heartfelt, more intimacy, less interferences, less blocks.